First, we're gonna address his sciatica and then we'll deal with the hiatal hernia. Come on and check it out here. Hello everyone, Dr. David Cull here with Synergy Wellness in New York City. Today we have another case of hiatal hernia and um, you know I know you guys have seen lots of videos on uh, people with hiatal hernias. We've even done some videos of follow-ups. So, um, you know, months later. So be sure to look at those. He had asked me if um, we have any people that have gotten surgery. Um, what we do is we help people avoid uh, the fundoscopic surgery. And um, there are a few different techniques on, on how the surgery is done. We're not going to get into that because we help people avoid that. So we don't need to get into the surgeries. And oftentimes the surgeries don't hold. They're, um, they're uh, useless after five years um, or six or seven years. It just depends on each case. Some people it's even less than five years. So surgery is not always the answer. In fact, most cases it's not the answer at all. So uh, Aziz here is taking uh, medication, right? He's taking um, uh, PPI medication for his hiatal hernia, his acid reflux. He also has really bad heart palpitations and he gets mid-back pain. And that mid-back pain is related to his hiatal hernia because the hernia or the stomach, excuse me, uh, attaches to the spine via the anterior longitudinal ligament. And I'm gonna show you on his barium swallow. So he's the first person that actually brought in a barium swallow test. His endoscopy was negative. Now, if your hiatal hernia is less than two centimeters, oftentimes an endoscopy won't pick it up. And believe it or not, a barium swallow can also miss it if it's a small hiatal hernia. His was caught, and we're gonna see if you guys can see this. So if you look here, you'll see um, the stomach here, okay? This is the stomach. And then right here, you see the hernia, okay? So if you'll notice his diaphragm is right, right at that level, but the hernia is just above the diaphragm. See that bulb right there? Okay, and then this here is the stomach. So that's a nice view of a hiatal hernia on a barium swallow. Now, we're gonna go ahead and do the hiatal hernia maneuver on him, and in a, a week or two, we may end up giving him um, our hiatal hernia hook, which is a self-help tool uh, to help him, um, you know, treat the hiatal hernia on his own. Now, he also has a herniated disc at L5-S1, uh, which causes sciatica down the right leg. So first, we're going to address his sciatica, and then we'll deal with the hiatal hernia. Come on and check it out here. All right, this is your first adjustment, right? Yep. All right, so let's have you lay on this side, on the good side. Uh, the bad leg side up, facing up. Okay. So he was saying that his uh, sciatica gets worse when you sit. Um, you can go ahead and slide down and place your area. The reason for that is when we sit, you, me, everyone, we add weight to the pressure or pressure to the discs in the lower back. So when, you're, when I'm standing like this, I have about 150 pounds of pressure on my discs. When I sit, that goes up to 225, an extra 75 pounds of pressure on my lower discs. Sit like that for a long period of time, that's how you get an aggravation of your sciatic nerve. So we're gonna go ahead and do a little nerve flossing and um, uh, loosen up the glute and the piriformis because some cases can be trapped in the piriformis, the sciatic nerve. In his situation, that's not the case. He has a disc herniation. It's not a huge one, it's a two millimeter disc herniation and we can definitely treat this and address this without any surgery. So if you have sciatica and a disc herniation, this cox flexion distraction technique is the gold standard. It's not like every chiropractic technique. And a lot of people say they went to a chiropractor and didn't, their sciatica didn't get better. Um, just because you went to a chiropractor doesn't mean he did a certain technique on you. There's hundreds of techniques. And, you know, just like if you went to a dentist and had a bad uh, experience at a dentist, would you write off dentistry? I hope not. Otherwise, you're going to have some stinky breath. So, you don't write off chiropractic. You just go to another chiropractor that might specialize in cox flexion distraction technique or is certified in it like myself. 
So what I'm gonna have you do here is, Aziz, I'm gonna have you, um, th this leg slightly bent, you're gonna bring your leg against my hip, and then you're gonna reach that leg forward and with your toes, touch the corner of the chair there. Mm -hmm. Try oh, to touch the chair. The left. No, not that one, this oh, one. Good. There we go, and bring it back. Yep, okay, and forward. Good, and back. So we're doing a little nerve flossing. It's also called active release technique. And again. Good, and back. And again. Good, and back. And again. And back. And again. Good, and a few more. You doing okay here? Okay. Did you have sciatica when you came in today? Uh, usually when I walk, it's, it's, I'm good. Okay, it's when you when sit. When I sit a long time, when I stand a long time, it's going to start from that point okay. all the way go down. So you heard him say when he sits for a long time and he drives a car for a living. Yeah. Uh, it makes life kind of difficult when you drive and you sit all day. So... What I'm gonna do is um, give him something called a sacral wedge. And I'm actually gonna do a separate video. I was gonna do that at the end of my work day today, a separate video on uh, people with herniated discs, how to sit comfortably uh, with less pressure on the disc. Cause I said it's 225 pounds of pressure. So you wanna take some of that pressure off, especially if you have a sit down job or you sit in front of a computer all day. You can't avoid that. You gotta work, gotta pay the bills. Lay on your stomach. So I'm going to suggest a little wedge for you um, that you can get, and uh, that will help take a lot of pressure off that sciatic nerve, okay? All right, so here we go, the flexion distraction technique. It's not going to hurt at all. It's just going to feel like a deep stretch in your lower back, okay? Tell me if you have any pain down the leg or numbness down into your leg when I do this. Anything? Good. So because he brought in his MRI, I know which disc is affected. And I could be much more specific with my adjustment here and my treatment. It really helps if you guys bring in, you know, barium swallows and endoscopy results, MRI results, any kind of tests that you have related to your condition. Uh, they're important to bring in these diagnostic tests that we're talking about are very objective tests. It doesn't get more objective than that. So very important that uh, they're brought in um, on your first visit if possible, if you have them. How are we doing here? Okay? All right. Now I'm gonna go easy on you here with the lower back. I wanna see how you respond to that flexion distraction technique. Um, put your head right in the center for me. You see here, as I bend his knees, see how this leg doesn't go back as far, this left one? So that tells me his pelvis is pulled back on the left side. And I can also tell because his leg is shorter on this left side. So let's have you lay on your right side and face me. Now, I know you've, been, you've watched probably some videos on YouTube and um, you may hear some cracking, okay? Pop, crack. That's just a byproduct of the adjustment. It's not the actual adjustment itself, okay? So you may or may not hear it. It doesn't mean I've, it was successful or unsuccessful, okay? And just relax yourself here. Okay, and the other side up. Okay, I'm gonna bend this top leg here. So one of the reasons I made my YouTube channel was because I wanted to help people with certain conditions. Um, that they couldn't find help from, from traditional medicine. Hiatal hernia is one of those, right? Costochondritis is another topic. Um, you know, it's chest pain right here in the front and difficulty breathing in and out. And the symptoms are, can be similar to hiatal hernia, but there are no answers in the medical field for that. No solutions, no good solutions. None that work and some that are just really invasive and just shouldn't even you shouldn't even think about doing some of them, like 
like the hiatal hernia surgery, you should have the hiatal hernia maneuver done, which we're about to do on him way before you even consider getting surgery. And unfortunately, a lot of people never even hear of the maneuver. And um, it, it's, you know, we have a, a huge success rate. I don't know what percentage, but it's high, okay? Definitely well over 75%. Okay, so take a deep breath in and blow all the way out. Okay, now I want you to lay on your stomach. So now what I'm gonna do with Aziz is I'm gonna look at his T6 through T9. T6 through T9 is where the diaphragm sits and nerve supply to the stomach. <clears throat> and then we're gonna also check C3 through C5 in his neck, which is the phrenic nerve and that goes to the stomach and diaphragm as well. So I wanna make sure um, the nerves are flowing freely and there's no interference there. Go ahead, bend your knees for me. Take a deep breath in and blow out. Good. And again, deep breath in, all the way out. Relax your shoulders. Good. Okay, turn over on your back. All right, here we go. We're going to do the hiatal hernia maneuver. Now, what's unique about what we do is we use a laser in the beginning just to relax the muscles in the abdominal wall. Do you, your uh, report that you have, the barium swallow, do you have a report with that as well? Oh, uh, no. They didn't give you a report? They give you the report, but I, I didn't see that they, uh, like... You didn't see the what? Uh, the, they, they didn't see the about the hernia to the hernia. They said a uh, uh, little bit of inflammation on the tongue, that's it. And it, it was uh, like a uh, Russian language. That's what I did. Okay. So All right, so we're going to use this just to calm the spasms down in the stomach area and the abdominal wall because I have to get through the abdominal wall here. And he's pretty relaxed, actually. Some patients come in and their stomach's like a board. And yeah. It's really hard to get through it. And Sometimes they're just bloated or, um, which makes it, you know, the abdominal wall more, more difficult to get through. Um, he's got to be pretty easy here. So go ahead, bend your knees. So folks, if you have a hiatal hernia and you've never had what I'm about to do now done, go get it done. Do this before you consider surgery. Do this before you consider medication. He's on medication, and we're going to hopefully get him off the medication soon. But, you know, ultimately that's his decision, okay? So just relax here. And you might feel some belching afterwards. A little bit of gurgling in the stomach. So I'm just left of his xiphoid process. And I'm latching on under, just slightly under the ribs here sort of pushing the bottom lobe of the liver down away and grasping onto that stomach and then scooping it down and out of the diaphragm. How are you doing here? Okay? It's a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, I feel in the heartbeat. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's your abdominal aorta. Mm. One more here, deep breath in and out. So what I like to do is put a little more pressure each time he exhales because that gets the air out of the, the stomach and this whole area and reduces the pressure and I'm able to just press in there a little bit more. So each exhalation I push in a little bit more and then 
when he exhales, that's when I kind of do the scooping downward motion. I don't want to do that when he's breathing in as much. It's harder for him. And I lied. We're going to do one more. And also, if you're not getting results, move the placement of your hand to the side an inch or so, either medially or laterally, because not everybody's stomach is in exactly the same place. Okay, now I know you had some difficulty breathing, um, even when you came in today, correct? Yes. Okay, I want you to roll over to your side and stand up, take a deep breath in, see how that feels. And typically you're gonna notice pretty quickly whether or not there's some slight changes, okay? Go ahead and stand up. You, I'm sorry? I feel it a little bit easier. You feel it already? Yes. Go ahead and take a, another breath in for me. I was uh, actually I was doing the like this exercise when I watched your videos. Mm -hmm. I'm not in going the, in as deep, right? Yes, I mean the this this shortness of breeze is every time when I, after the eating. Okay. So after like two after the eating like two hours, it's gonna lose the shortness of breeze. If I eat again, after thirty minutes, it's gonna start the shortness of breeze. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the hiatal hernia treatment in two days again, the maneuver again for you. We're gonna treat your sciatica. And uh, I may send you home next week or the week after with a tool that I patented. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you'll be able to do it yourself once a day or once every other day, okay? In the meantime, I just want you to kind of take a mental note of how you're feeling today for the next few hours. It may, mm. it may re herniate back, especially if you bend down or lift something heavy. So if you, avoid that okay mm -hmm. now I know that you drive for a living so we did a video um, for people that suffer from hiatal hernia and have to sit all day um, and what I do is I suggest you roll a towel up or anything you could use your sweatshirt for now because you don't have a towel in your car but roll a towel up fold it three ways the long way roll it up put a rubber band around it and put it right back here oh. and then when you have it right back here what'll happen is it'll force your stomach out, your diaphragm up. Oh. So hopefully the stomach will pull down out of the diaphragm because when you slouch like this, like this. you're dropping the break. diaphragm down and you're increasing the risk oh, okay. of herniating it. So by sitting up like that in that posture like this, like yeah, this. so you just put the towel behind you and, and just lean back against that. Don't lean forward, lean yeah. back. Oh. And I would drive from now on with that behind your mid back there. I put it over, yes. Okay. Oh, you have already done that? Yeah. Like so this. you saw my, some of my videos on that. Yes, yes. Okay, good. I feel the after that. Does that help a little bit? Yes. Yeah. With your breathing, no. too? The breathing is no, I think. The breathing, okay. Okay, give it time. The, for breathing, it's actually when I walk, it's going to be better. It, okay. Yeah. When I walk like 20, 15 minutes, it's okay. going to lose the old pains, like uh, chest pains also. And things loosen up a little bit? Yes. Sometimes I have a little pain after the E also. Okay. Yes, on the rest. On okay. The rest. Yeah. So I want you to, you know, obviously go eat lunch or dinner now and let me know how you're doing when I see you on Thursday. We'll reconvene and do some of the same things again, okay? All right. Thank you. Look forward to helping you. Yes. Me too. All right. Thank you. Folks, uh, hopefully we do a follow-up video so you can see, because he had questions, you know, how people are doing afterwards. We've done some follow-up videos, um, so we'll try to do a follow-up video with him um, so you can all see how he's doing, okay? Thanks for tubing in. If you guys have any questions or comments, comment below. I'd be happy to answer them. I try to answer every question. I can't necessarily diagnose you online, but I might be able to help you answer some questions. Thanks again for tubing in. Mm -hmm.